Hey everyone, MadHitter here, and welcome to another video. I know I haven't uploaded in a while. If you saw my previous video, you'll know. But today I'm hitting you all with the triple upload. And I know, I promise, going forward, there will be at least five uploads a week. And I can't say seven because I'll occasionally have to take breaks. It's just how it is. I can't guarantee daily uploads, but I can guarantee at least five uploads a week. If you, I know Zero to Hero fans are just waiting, but just just please wait patiently. Let's begin. Today's topic is character synergies. How to make the most broken, juicy teams. And I'm, I say juicy, and I mean it. Because these teams are going to be so damn good. First step. This is the most important step. Okay, if you don't know how to do this, I can't help you. I genuinely can't. That is to press this menu button. Press this button that says book. I know a lot of you don't read, but you actually have to read in this game. Click hero, and whatever teams you want to build with your heroes, you read the heroes. That's it. You just have to read, man. I am sorry. I can't force you to read. I can't go over to your house and just smash over your head a freaking Guardian Tales book and say, learn this shit right now. I can't do that. I genuinely can't. I can make as many guys as you guys would like, but if you don't read, I can't help you. I, it's genuinely impossible, right? Let's take one example. Mario. Okay, let's check her abilities. Wow, generic normal attack, generic chain skill. Huh, special ability? If there are earth type heroes in the party excluding herself, increases damage by 30%. <gasps> Does this mean she's good with earth heroes? No way, that can't be. That's cap. That's cap right here. Cow Cow Games is capping to you. That's bullshit. 100% fake news, right? Her party buff. Oh, that's a generic party buff. Okay. Okay, see, fake news. Muriel works with any element, right? So let's check her weapon to confirm that. Huh. On crit, it increases movement speed by 5%. See, I'm telling you, she works well on any team. And reduce earth type res Oh, shit. Okay, so uh, moral of the story, read. Okay, read. She doesn't work on any team perfectly. To get the best value, in fact, the most value out of Mariel, you want her with Earth Heroes. Mariel, Kamael is one of the most broken duo combos in the game for that reason, okay? Kamael shreds range defense, Kamael provides sustain, Kamael provides range damage party buff, uh, and Mariel completes that by providing Earth type shred, providing crit. And another thing I'm going to quickly drop in here, same party buffs just don't stack very well, right? So you want to add varying party buffs. Having three heroes with 50% range damage is significantly worse than having a hero with range damage, another with crit, right? For example, stuff like that. It's why Maya is actually really, really damn good because you can squeeze her on a lot of teams and get a lot of value out of her. For example, this is my go-to story team. Go-to story team. Any content where I need really good damage and really good survival... This is just, is, mwah, mwah, this team is beautiful, okay? Maya provides 90% skill damage to the entire party. And based off of the items and merges and stuff I'm running, it is a broken synergy. Yunha gains additional damage off of that. And because of her weapons ability, she gains additional damage based off the skill damage she has, her bonus skill damage. And Little Princess Fager decreases damage taken by 15% of increased skill damage, which means Craig and Agma are taking a lot less damage. As you can see here, it's a pretty simple synergy, right? Where skill damage buffs damage and tankiness across my whole team, right? And that is just ignoring the fact that Yunha's skill already hurts. And increasing damage on it is just making it better. It's just beating a dead horse. So it's a simple synergy, right? Nothing complicated. There's no, you know, quantum mathematics, physics, nuclear bomb, pipe bomb calculations, Walter White meth bomb. Right? No, none of that. It's really simple. All you need to do is read. That's it, right? Let's take one more example for, you know, my friends that are slow to catch on. No problem, no problem, right? Let's look at, whew, what do you guys want to look at? Let's look at Claude, right? Range damage, generic here, huh? Normal attack shreds, dark type resistance. Well, every, every character can be a dark type if you really try hard, right? Right? J just like how Claude can use a great sword. Huh. Chain skill increases all his dark type attack. That's fake. This is fake news. The government is lying to you, okay? The shadow government is just capping. Let's check his exclusive weapon. See, I'm telling you, man. The shadow government's lying to you. No. I, I know I'm clowning around a lot right now. But it's genuinely the only way I can make you all actually watch the video. Because half of you just click off as soon as I start explaining information properly. So this is you guys when I'm making fun shit. You guys just keep watching. And then when I actually explain information, you guys just hop off. 
<laughs> why? And then you guys ask the questions, which I've answered. Now I'm going to answer again. Okay, please watch, right? Now that all the laughers are gone, watch, okay? Claude works on most teams that are range damage based, right? That is if they're generic range damage units. For example, Claude won't work with Orca because she shreds water type resistance, which means both of them are not getting good value out of their kits. However, Claude with Kamael actually works pretty darn well because... Kamael will shred range defense, which means Claude is at least benefiting quite nicely from Kamael, right? Even though Kamael isn't getting a lot from Claude outside of his party buff, which has dimish diminishing returns because they're the same party buff, it's still really nice because they have some synergy. However, if they're completely unsynergetic, for example, Claude and Beth, you may be like, wait, hold on, Beth's a dark character, right? So they should work. You haven't noticed one thing, little goofball. She is a melee character, which means Claude's party buff does nothing for her, and Beth's party buff does nothing for Claude. Now you can argue, but 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 their but their chain skills sometimes do range damage and melee damage. Yeah, and how consistent is your chain skill pulled off? Right, right, exactly, exactly. So that would be complete not synergetic. And you can argue, but, oh, dark attack and dark defense shred. Yeah, that's all you're getting, but everything else goes to shit. Meanwhile, you could be running someone else, for example, like Ascended Karina, or for example, the new Vanette in our dark team, and you'd be getting infinite value out of Claude and the rest of the team. And that's what I mean. You have to read characters to properly understand what they do. If you don't know what a character does, I can tell you all the good teams in the world, right? All the best teams for everything. You won't understand how to work, how they work, and you won't understand how to build them. You won't understand when to use them. You won't understand a thing outside of the one thing you're told. And that's bad because that means you can't make decisions on your own. It means you can't have that much fun in the game. It means you can't progress at a good pace because every time you need to do something, you're going to have to go on YouTube. You're going to go have to go on Discord and God forbid, don't go to the Reddit, please. That there is a genuine, you know, silly little goofball there <laughs> that is very scary. Don't go there. Not only is there a goofball there, but a whole boatload of, uh, Let's just say Keyboard Warrior, Redditors, Discord Mod 5000s there, okay? They're the new model. They are very goofball -y about the game, okay? They will recommend to you the most... Oh, oh God, don't get me started. This, that's a whole nother video. But read. Genuinely, that's the most important thing to understanding character synergies is read. Next up, I'm going to show you why rain, party buffs have diminishing returns. It's because they are multiplicative. That means... 50% range damage on four heroes in your party isn't 200% range damage. It's not. It's a lot, lot less. Okay? It's going to be like uh, around... I'm not doing the math in my head. Just know it's a lot less. Try to mix up party buffs. Right? For example, here, 48% defense plus 45% defense. That's less value than just defense plus HP. Because those buffs now have to multiply and percentages work differently <laughs> right so understand that and try to get variety of party buffs right crit range damage is generally one of the better combinations because you get both on the party and generally most crit units have pretty good kits overall so you can run for example first corpse with yunha and it's a good synergy however for story she's just not that great first corpse is more so a dps meter character she isn't even that great in coliseum because her ai just gets her completely shit on so yeah do realize that and that's the first part i know it's really long for the first part but let's actually get into the second part and that is itemization Itemization actually has a lot to do with synergy here. If you notice, each each weapon has a specific attribute of attack here. Earth attack, dark attack, uh, basic attack. That's going to be the primary element of damage that character is doing. Meaning, they can't access other types of damage. So, for example, let's say Beth is hitting a boss and you have Kamel on your team, right? Beth is doing dark damage and she can't benefit from the range defense shred, not because she's dark, 
right? We don't do racism here, but it's because she's melee. She can't tap into that. So you have to also understand that weapons play a key role. That's why in raids, on certain teams, when you're, you know, splashing across heroes, for example, Andras, you'll switch her weapon according to the element of the team. If Andras is on basic, you're going to be using Eva's, um, vi uh, Eva's, Eva's magical stick, <laughs> all right? Or if she's on earth, you're going to be wanting to using Equinox and stuff like that. And that's because it allows you to tap into what you can't tap into normally. It allows you to essentially get the most synergy out of your team. And part of this is also accessories, right? If a character is your lead character, you want weapon skill regen speed and skill damage because you're going to be spamming their skills. You're going to be getting chain skills off. And it's important to do that. Off lead characters have horrible synergies with weapon skill regen speed and skill damage because they can't use their skills with the exception of Ascended Karina. But she's primarily for darks and Ascending Karina, I think, is worse than Ascending Craig early on. It, it's, it's a whole debate. I'll make that a separate video too, okay? But if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment, Join the community discord, blahzy blahzy blah, apparently 5 billion percent of you guys aren't subscribed, so make sure to subscribe off the like button, I don't know, I have to do that, uh, I signed a contract with some shady man on the street that says I have to, so yeah, that's my obligation, but they have synergies too, let's say, for example, mirror earring of nobility, I see this happen with a lot of new players all the time, where they just slap any mirror accessories they get, because they're like, huh, neuron activated? It's an epic accessory? That's so OP. I have to run it right now. But it's Dark Type Attack. What are you doing with it on Mario? What's she gonna do with it? Why does your Craig have a Ruby Mirror Ring? Why? What is he doing with that? <laughs> right? Read it and understand what stats it's providing. For example, with tanks, you care about three things. Base defense, defense percentage, and HP percentage. That's it. Every other stat does not matter. This Mad Panda Brooch right here could have zero damage reduction, which is useless, by the way, because it's flat damage. So you're essentially taking 40 less damage. Yeah, let's go, dude. That's awesome. You're taking 40 less damage from a boss that's doing, you know, thousands, if not, you know, dozens of thousands per skill shot or hit. Congrats. 40 less damage. Let's go. <laughs> right. And... The defense is going to be what increases your toughness the most. Base and percentage. The base is contributing to quite a lot of toughness. In case you haven't seen it, try using a lower base defense accessory compared to a higher one, and you'll see how big the defense gap is. Defense percentage and HP are really nice as they boost your main toughness stats. However, the attack is also useless. We're not running DPS Craig here, okay? Craig isn't going to go on your Earth Ray team and, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't run tanks and raid. If you, if I see you running tanks and raid, I will come to your house and slap you with a fan. I don't know. I saw the nearest object to me and said it. But don't run tanks there. Look at the items. If I'm running, you know, a light damage dealer as my lead, I want something that either provides light attack, attack, and weapon skill regen speed and skill damage because they're going to be getting their skills off. They're going to be attacking all the time. But on a healer, what I also wouldn't care about is attack because it's useless. It does nothing for a healer except Ascended Karina. Ascended Karina is an exception in a lot of cases because she's just such a unique kit. However, read the stuff, man. I am genuinely serious. Read the items, understand what they do for your character. Your lead will always want some form of attack, weapon skill, regen, speed, skill damage. Defensive stats generally don't matter because you control it unless you're doing Colosseum or PvP, in which case defensive stats do matter. But for PvE stuff like raid, and maybe boss rush early on, you're kind of my, you know, like some defense because it will allow you to give you some leeway and dodging. But for raids and generally story, you don't have to focus on toughness. Raids, it doesn't matter, right? I could run a freaking, for example, this earring of nobility. It has almost max everything, just a bit less uh, weapon skill and speed, but I'm not risking rolling that crap. But it has no defense. And it doesn't matter because content that I'm using it for doesn't care for that defense, right? So I can get away with it. But if I were to be using this mirror earring of nobility, for example, in let's say arena or Colosseum, I'd be paying for that, right? And you know, it might not be explicitly obvious at first that you're losing due to it, but you're eventually gonna start to see the limitations of it. So understand what characters need what stats. I'm just gonna quickly show you some gearing here. 
Let's look at Yunha here. I can run for her a multitude of options because that's just how she works. I can run Mirror Earring of Patience because it will provide me basic attack. But at the same time, I can run other options that are equally as good. Uh, if, for example, there's a Golden Pocket Watch, that's going to be what you're running early on. It gives you Weapon Skill Regen Speed, Attack, uh, Skill Damage, and some decent nice uh, defensive stats across the board. If you're running off lead, you might be wanting to run Sharpshooter as it's going to give you 10% crit chance if fully limit broken, 5% if not, and Attack and skill damage but once again unless it's a center karina skill damage doesn't matter so you only go for sharpshooter for the crit and attack pretty much sniper goggles pretty much the same thing off lead it doesn't matter what the defense rolls are it doesn't you focus on an item for one thing i'm not going to be rolling my minotaur necklace and just completely screaming and crying every day that i don't have a perfect defense roll here i do but if i don't i'm not going to be crying about that because it doesn't matter like, in all honesty, don't overroll things or don't force items that don't matter for your characters. This applies to merges as well, right? Each merge has a specific purpose, especially the elemental ones. Don't force a water type on your random tank. Try to, like, even on Craig, don't force a random dark type or water type. Merge on him. At least get him on AO, because I'm asking if you have a spare one or two. Merges matter. Synergy with items matter. Every small detail plays into a bigger role in Guardian Tales. It's not like a whole bunch of crappy other gachas where a billion different itemization and, you know, mechanics exist only to make you spend more. They don't. In Guardian Tales, they all have a genuine purpose. It's the same thing with cards. Understand what content needs what cards to synergize perfectly with, right? If you're running lead, skill damage might be your best bet. On a tank, the best synergy they're going to have is with defense cards because that's what's going to make them tanky. I shouldn't have to explain that, right? Please don't run crit chance on your tanks. It's just not a good idea. And the third final piece of team synergy is actually investing and building the teams, right? I can have, you know, Craig here, right, with uh, old, uh, where's my Vanette? Get, 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 get that little midget over here. Okay. <laughs> I don't have her EX here, but let's say I'm running a freaking Monodark team. Well, not Monodark, but just a good Dark team here with uh, Pogma. And uh, where's my last Dark here that I'm going to run? First Corpse, right? This is a good Dark team. Pretend Ogma has his gun. I don't have Ogma's gun. Okay, I'm broke as shit. Ignore that, please. But pretend he does. And this is a great team. However, there's a couple of issues. And that's that my Vanette is level one. She doesn't have her EX. In fact, she doesn't have any items, right? Build and invest in your heroes to actually make them have effect. Characters can only work when fully invested. You can't place together great teams without having the characters built up and having them actually be able to access and tap into the full potential of their kits. And yeah, that's literally how team synergies work. And I know, I know, I'm going to explain the smallest bit here. Elemental attack party buff characters are best within their mono teams. I have a mono team guide that's hopefully uploaded before this. It might be after, but you can check that out if you're confused on that. But mono elements exist and Garum is not good outside of a water team because this party buff will do absolutely jack squat on them. Understand and read. Read. That is the biggest advice I can give you. Anyways, if you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, make sure to uh, join. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll see you all later uh, in the next one. Bye.